we have something very exciting for you. And kids, we want you to stay in and watch it because you're going to hear two testimonies of water baptism, two testimonies similar to what these songs set it up so well, how Jesus showed up in their lives and how they responded to the love of Jesus. And they're going to share their stories with us. And then they're going to get in this um, hot tub that has not been heated. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's, ah, ooh. Okay. The good news is I'm getting in there with you. Okay. That's why your pastor's wearing sweats today um, is because I got to get inside this tank with them. And we're going to do this water baptism. So we're really excited for that. So if I could. Jordan, you can bring radio for me. Sorry. No, I want it on this thing. Oh, yeah. yeah so. Um, so I'm going to invite. Uh, we got two candidates getting baptized. And what we're going to do is start with the first one. Jeff, come on up. Uh, this is Jeff Thorniel. Give him a big hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up for Jeff's height. There you go. We're going to set it up. I can't hold my mic like this that long, so we're giving him the mic. That's, that's a dangerous thing, uh, Jeff. I don't give the mic to people too often, so there you go. Now, so, so Jeff, I've asked Jeff, um, I've asked each of the candidates if they would just share their story. And uh, rather than do it interview style, although I'm going to stay up here with you, Jeff, um, I just said tell, tell us your story about your faith journey and just kind of how you came to this place today where you're going to get in this tank and publicly affirm your decision to follow Jesus. Go ahead. Thank you, Manny. My name is Jeff Thornhill, and I'm incredibly grateful today to stand here. I'm son of Gordon and Diana Thornhill, brother of Shelly, Jennifer, and Bradley, husband to Allison, father to Emma and Jackson. This day is a very special day. Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. I'm getting baptized today. It's also my birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's taken me 52 years to get to this very moment. Thank you. I grew up on the west side of Vancouver with a family with a, in a great neighborhood with lots of kids. Street hockey was everywhere. Uh, we knew everyone on our block, and it was just good. We all went to Ryerson United Church in Caresdale. And my mother sang in the church choir, and so did my siblings in the children's choir. My mother would join me at bedtime to say our family prayers before sleep every night. My father was a little old school. He provided us with everything we ever needed and love, but he also placed the drink up there as well. Somewhere along the way, our church attendance started to wane. Our nightly prayers started to fade. And on a few occasions over family conversations, I recall having my mother share that all of my siblings got baptized except me. Why? I remember feeling a sense of sadness, a sort of emptiness. Why not me? And this is something I've carried my entire life. Isaiah 41.10, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. As I moved on to my teen years, I excelled in some areas, and I also had my fair share of struggles. As the later teens unfolded, the path was getting darker and darker, all culminating into one night. In my darkest hour, I was blessed to be in God's presence. We were in full dialogue with each other as tears rolled down my face. Micah chapter 6, verse 8, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? A shift had taken place, a new path. I turned my back on the darkness and was now moving towards the light again. Joel chapter 2, ch Joel chapter 4, verse 25, I will give back what you lost. God declares, I will restore to you the lost years. 
that the swarming of the locusts has eaten. This promise is not just words. It's a declaration of what God is actively doing in our lives. He's ready to turn our wasted years into seasons of abundance and joy. A great decade unfolded for myself. I was connected. I was alive. Things were clicking for me. But a piece of the puzzle was missing. And as I built my house, there was a slight problem. The foundation was on sand and not rock. My family supported me as I pursued a career in martial arts, and it brought me tremendous discipline and focus. I competed all over the world, and I studied Eastern philosophy, and it meant a lot to me, the success that I had. I used those wasted years as fuel for my fire. Many success was had. Bigger challenges were on the horizon, though. The physical toll of competition was taken over. The path was losing its light again. I was in pain, and I needed to medicate that pain. I started to go to nightclubs. Sin places distance between man and God. Sin sponsors every trip away from God. But then God introduced a very special woman into my life. Her name was Allison. A ray of light had come down from the heavens. And it didn't take us long to get married. The light was shining again. We bought our first home together. And we started planning a family together. I said four kids. She said two. As you can see, she won. <laughs> Lots of exciting times, lots of fun and laughter. But my physical health had taken a turn. To manage the pain of needing both of my hips replaced, I was back to an old pattern, self-medicating to manage that pain and the limitations of my physical body at such a young age. On April 29, 2014, God had blessed us with a beautiful, strong daughter named Emma Sophia Thornhill. We barely made it to the hospital that night as the Russian panic sat in. I prayed. Emma was safe. However, Ali was in deep trouble. She was rushed, rushed off to an emergency surgery. I was left with our newborn daughter, just the two of us in a room. I prayed some more with this little gift from God in my arms. And I was blown away by this little girl as I gazed into her eyes for what felt like hours. Fortunately, Ali was safe and the three of us were reunited. As the weeks went by, I was not quite done with some of the behaviors which were no longer serving me. What kind of a father did I want to be? What kind of a husband did I want to be? And I learned some valuable lessons from my father. What to do and what not to do. That night I prayed about being the man and father that I should be. And I woke up that morning in a conversation with God. And all of the answers came to me. Psalm 25, verse 1 to 2. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. This was a major turning point in my life. The light was shining bright. The gift of our daughter, glory be to God. April 2nd, 2017, Jackson Gordon Thornhill was born, my son. God blessed us with a healthy, strong son. Our family was complete. We wanted a house, and we were guided to Ladner, such an amazing community. We needed child care, and we found Creation Station. And in that, I met Danny, which was also connected to Lighthouse Church as well, Creation Station. <clears throat> I found two men out here, since I've lived here, whom I consider my lighthouses. Symbols of hope, beacons of light, James Ritchie. Pastor Danny, since knowing Danny for five years, we spent many an hour together. Danny, you've never given up on me. 
a part of me dies today and a part of me is reborn. Be still and know that I am God. I am no longer doing this journey on my own. Be still and know that I am God. It means defeat. It means to let down your hands. It means to give up trying to figure out everything under your own strength. Come to the end of yourself. I am no longer driving this car. You know, there's a Carrie Underwood song. It's Jesus, take the wheel. Can I get an amen on a Sunday? Thank you. I take it you don't want to get this all wet. And, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff, so much. Go and get changed and join us again um, over here. and We'll dunk him in the tank in a minute. Next, coming on up is Leaf. And I'm just going to, just one note is so we can hear you well. Try to stay in this range of the microphone. But just away from the microphone? Yeah, it's wherever you like. But just uh, don't walk over there or something. Huh? Unless you want the mic and you want to go roaming. No. Okay, okay. <laughs> This is Leif, and uh, I love Leif because he's got a great Norwegian name, Leif Erikson. I like that. Um, but Leif, uh, we met not too long ago, and I had the joy of being able to pray with you and, and to see what God was doing in your life. And we just want you to take a minute now and tell us a little your story, Leif, um, of how you've come to this place now. Yeah, um, my name's Leif Erikson. Uh, I grew up here in Gladner for most of my life. Um, I grew up in a Christian household uh, from a very young age. Um, a little, just a little nervous. <laughs> uh, yeah, I grew up in a Christian household from a young age. Um, we went to a CLA out in Langley, one of the uh, what is that, one of the sister churches uh, to this one. And those are some very, very fond memories I have. Uh, being in Sunday school, uh, the services were great. Um, it was a good community. Um, and Fortunately, there was uh, some members of my, my late father's side of the family. Uh, they sort of used their Christian identity to uh, manipulate people and get to manipulate people, I can say in summary. And so uh, from a young age, I had sort of a, that negative aspect, or at least it seemed it was a negative aspect, uh, in my line of sight. And so I started developing these ideas like, oh, you know, I guess this is these are what Christians are sort of thing. And, uh, you know, that kind of stuck with me. Um, then my mother went through a rough divorce with uh, my late father, and his life just completely deteriorated, uh, turned to drugs, and uh, it just went downhill from there. Uh, the last I saw him was uh, New Year's Eve of 2001, and then uh, never saw him again. So I blamed, uh, I blamed God for that, and I blamed the faith, and... Uh, I just, again, it kind of cemented that idea in my head what, uh, that this is what this is what Christians are. You know, they're not honest people sort of thing. So I became very mad with uh, God, and I flat out rejected it from my life. And, uh, you know, that did no good for me. Spent uh, a lot of years, my teen years and my 20s, um, trying to find fulfillment in uh, empty things, you know, through pleasure, um, through, uh, how would I say, um, substances. Uh, and it all led me to nowhere, bought into that new age spiritual kind of nonsense, stones with energy and this sort of silly thing. And all of it, you know, it didn't lead me anywhere. And it just made me feel quite empty. Um, you know, ruined relationships with uh, my selfish kind of ways and thinking because I thought like, oh, you know, because I had a rough upbringing, uh, everything should be given to me, you know. Um, I wasn't, yeah, I just became very selfish and turned inwards. And that really ruined a lot of things in my life for me. Uh, so as I got older through my 20s, uh, you know, I started, men who grew up without fathers tend to collect father figures. And uh, so I I came upon uh, Jordan Peterson's work, actually, um, a uh, doctor of psychology from Toronto, a uh, Christian man himself, and uh, the first thing I started listening to of his was he did a 12-part uh, series on Genesis, a lecture series, and uh, it really, really resonated with me. 
in particular, uh, the story of Cain and Abel that he broke down, which, you know, all of you I'm sure know the story of Cain and Abel, but uh, Abel is the brother who makes great sacrifices and uh, is very close to God, walks with him in the garden, and Cain is uh, the brother who doesn't really work hard uh, to earn God's love, just kind of expects it, and he becomes very dejected, and so he goes to God, and he's like, hey, you know, I make sacrifices too, and, you know, you don't give me as much love as you give Abel, and God says to him, well, it's, yeah, you're right, I don't, and that's your fault, you're not making the sacrifices you should, and so Cain, not re uh, reflecting on that, decides, well, you know, I'm not going to change, so I'm just going to go ahead and kill the ideal. And that resonated with me so much because I realized, like, man, like, that's me. Like, I'm not making the sacrifices in my life that I should. I'm not working hard to have a good relationship with God. And I'm killing the ideal by being such a selfish jerk. And uh, so that, uh, that was, yeah, the, those lecture series, that was a big motivation for me to uh, re-examine my relationship with God, my relationship with faith. And uh, so it took, I was afraid to start coming back to church because of the, uh, the sort of negative, you know, view of just the, peop the uh, negative people that I had in my life. I was really afraid that I would encounter those sorts of false Christians uh, again. And uh, then I reached out to my friend Jesse I'm not crying, I've just got something in both my eyes. <laughs> um, I reached out to my friend Jesse, and I was like, hey, uh, you know, I know you're a Christian and all that, and I'd, uh, I'd really like to start going back to church. And uh, he was, you know, he was looking for a new church himself. And uh, so we really gained the strength from each other to come here, and through Jesse's uh, friendship with Jordan, uh, that was how we found Lighthouse Church. And... Uh, We've been coming here ever since, pretty much all the time together. And uh, whew, thanks a lot for that, Jesse. So that's how I'm here. Amen. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Lee. We, I had the privilege uh, when Lee first walked in here, can we talk, he said. So we sat down in the back room over there and... and uh, just hearing that story, uh, you know, we walked through the prayer where we just prayed to Jesus and confessed that very thing and had what we call the prayer of salvation. And guys, what a delight that is. Uh, what a delight and joy that is. And Leif can't say enough about how God has taken these lives. So we look forward to baptizing you in just a moment. Why don't you go and change as well? Come back out and we're going to do that baptism, okay? Thanks. Before I jump into the tank, um, let, let me just take a note to you guys, because as a pastor, i got to encourage you. God is... <laughs> you guys made it without crying, and here I am losing it. <laughs> God is at work in people's lives. And I, I, I tell you, like the heart that Nick and I are working through after COVID, talking about Luminous, talking about... Bringing Jesus to others, guys. They're not, you know, like, yeah, we had the joy of, of Leaf just showing up in church. That was amazing. But, guys, there, there's so many people out there that aren't just going to walk in here. They're like Leaf. They're, they're afraid. They're scared. We've got to go to them. And we've got to build relationships with them. There are people that God is putting in your path. And I'm, I, it's just my heart is that we would begin to see over and over and over again the people that God is leading to you to, that God is putting in your path, that are going to come and make the same confession. Not, not that we would brag, oh, look how many people we got baptized, but that we can celebrate how many people say, my life was selfish, my life was hurting, my life was dark, but now it's joy, now it's, now it's light, now I'm walking in peace. We want to hear those stories over and over again because people need Jesus and he brings them fullness of life. So let's keep that up. Let's keep our, our heart toward that end, okay? Um, that's enough preaching from me. So I'm going to put this down and jump in the tank. Come on up, Jeff, and your towel bearer. Just step back so you guys can see.
both places. He's so busy. Uh, John the Baptist said that uh, you know, we're baptizing people, and, and uh, the word baptismal means immersion. It means to be immersed. And this is symbolic, guys. He's, there's nothing magic that happens in this water. What magically happens is that this is symbolic of how he is immersing his life in Christ. He's going to be buried like Christ was, risen again in newness of life, and he is doing this in front of you. So um, if you would, just put your hands like that. Um, and I'll this hand like this. And, uh, okay. And uh, Jeff Thornton, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your determination to follow him always, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.